Good morning, everybody. Hope you are all healthy and safe. So let us continue with our uh, section on chapter ten, the Nikol Jibra. So in this uh, lecture, uh, we shall be introducing the concept of uh, what is meant by maximal ideal. So in the previous uh, section, we had discussed what is an ideal, and we had uh, done few properties related to it. So today we shall begin with uh, what is meant by maximal ideal. So what is a maximal ideal? An ideal which is proper. Okay, a proper ideal M, which is contained in the Banach algebra, is called a maximal ideal if there is no proper ideal which contains the ideal M. So it is a maximum value or maximum space. Okay, so a proper ideal is a maximal ideal if we cannot if we cannot find any other ideal which contains this capital M. Okay, so that is the definition of the maximal ideal. Now uh, there is a result uh, which states that every maximal ideal is closed. Okay, uh, it is a simple uh, result. I mean, there is nothing much to prove, but I'll just mention it. Uh, we have to show that every maximal ideal, that is, every maximal ideal, is closed. So uh, let M be the maximal ideal. Okay, let M be the maximal ideal. Okay, now we need to show that M is always closed. Okay, then M is equal to M closure for if not, okay, if it is not closed, if it is not closed then uh, we know the relation between a set and its closure that will be contained in M closure right so we have seen in the previous lecture that if M is an ideal then so is its closure that was the last remark that we had discussed if M is an ideal its closure is also an ideal so if the maximal ideal is not closed then there exists another ideal which contains m which is a contradiction to the maximality of m so every maximal ideal will always be closed okay so this is a simple property of the maximal ideal and now uh, we shall move on to the uh, very important theorem of uh, this lecture that is it was uh, given by gelfand okay so this is a uh, gelfand's theorem that is for any proper ideal i contained in the banach algebra there exists a maximal ideal okay for any proper ideal we choose we can always find a maximal ideal okay this is the gelfand's theorem so, so let's see the proof uh, first of all we are given an ideal i okay given proper ideal i we need to show that this ideal has a maximal ideal now let script b be the set of all proper ideals which contains i okay such that i is contained in j where this j belongs to script b so b is a set of all proper ideals which contains i now we are going to define a partial ordering on this set that is define j2 related to j1 if and only if j2 is contained in subset of j1 so this is a partial ordering we know subset is a partial ordering we can easily prove that now consider a linear chain so guys just recall what is partial ordering what is chain and all because here we are going to um, the main concept in this proof is uh, using zorn's lemma so you will have to just recall everything so let us consider a linear chain say script f is equal to j i okay so this is a linear chain 
so since uh, this is a chain uh, that is either for every j1 j2 belongs to script f either j1 is related to j2 or j2 is related to j1 uh, that is what we get we get either j1 is contained in j2 or j2 is contained in j1 so any of these conditions will be satisfied now choose j bar to be the union of all jis okay hmm? where this ji is an element of the linear chain hmm? then uh, this j bar forms a subspace because uh, the chain is linear so if you choose any two elements their linear combination will also be present in that particular uh, element the chain is linear okay so therefore j bar is equal to union of j forms a subspace now uh, let x belongs to j bar this implies x belongs to j i union of j i where j i belongs to f okay so for some y belongs to script a j i is our ideals right okay we get x y belongs to j i x belongs to union of j i means x belongs to j i right so for some i so if we have some y belongs to script a we get x into y belongs to j i because j i is an ideal okay mm, we get x y belongs to j i as j i is an ideal now so uh, this implies this is true for every i hmm? so i can say x y belongs to union of j i so this implies x y belongs to j bar so x is an element of j bar means it is an element of every j i so since j i is our ideals if we choose a y belongs to script a their product x y will also belongs to union of j i and hence it belongs to j bar and so what can i say j bar is an ideal by definition of ideal right so j bar forms an ideal now since j i s are proper ideals okay e the element e will not belong to any of the j i for any i so this implies e does not belong to union of j i also this implies e does not belong to j bar so j bar is not only an ideal it is a proper ideal and uh, by the assumption of j bar how have we assumed it we have assumed it to be the union of all gis assumption of j bar or by the definition of j bar forms the maximal element of the chain right it is a maximal element because every other element will be element contained in j bar maximal element of the chain so by we are going to apply zorn's lemma here hence by zorn's lemma so if we choose any chain That that chain will contain a maximal element. So by Zorn's lemma, there exists 
an ideal uh, say j ideal not j sorry containing this j that we have chosen in the very beginning okay so here i am choosing m maximal light so this implies j is contained in m so i was already contained in j which is contained in m this implies i is contained in m okay so there exists a maximal ideal so this is a proof so since uh, each chain has a maximal element by zorn's lemma we can find uh, the a maximal element for the whole set that is uh, for every j uh, we have we can find a maximal element say m such as j is contained in m. so i will also be contained in m so that was our gelfand's theorem uh, so it was a simple theorem a uh, simple proof so uh, next what we are going to do is we are going to um, uh, there is a few corollary which uh, you can just work it out on your own because it's uh, simple um, it's mentioned in the textbook so just refer to it um, now next what we are going to do is we are going to discuss about the quotient space okay okay so suppose that i is a closed ideal okay then only we can define the quotient space so i is a closed ideal of the algebra script a then the banach space a by script a by i under the operator uh, coset x into coset y is equal to coset x y forms a banach algebra okay that is if we are given a closed ideal and an algebra then the quotient space formed by these uh, two uh, algebra and the ideal is actually another banach algebra okay so let's uh, see how we can prove that uh, this is a banach algebra now uh, for that what we will be doing is we shall be considering the i mean that is we have to prove that uh, we have to prove that uh, the script a by i where a is an algebra and i is the ideal forms a banach algebra right so this is what we have to prove now first of all uh, let us choose uh, so we have to prove linearity associativity uh, then the norm is uh, less than or equal to individual product of individual norms and so on so first let uh, coset x and coset y belongs to the quotient space script a by i okay so this implies x plus i belongs to script a by i and y plus i belongs to script a by i okay now let's see what is the combination that is whether the linearity is true or not so the coset x into coset y is nothing but x plus i into y plus i uh, this can be written as x y plus i so a is an algebra so if x belongs to a and y belongs to a, x y also belongs to a so this is an element of script a by i as x y belongs to script a being an algebra okay so this condition is satisfied now let us uh, check for i don't think there's a need to check for the associativity but still let's just do it that is coset x into product coset y into coset z okay this can be written as coset x into by definition this is coset y dot z so again this is nothing but coset x y dot z so by associativity of elements in all these elements are script a so by associativity of uh, elements in the banach algebra this can be written as x y dot z so i can write this as dot y 
going to z so this is nothing but x cos at x into cos at y into cos at z so the associativity also holds now next we shall uh, talk about the identity element whether that identity element exists or not so clearly cos at e forms the identity right why because um, cos at e into cos at x by definition it is cos at x dot e this is the product defined so this is nothing but again cos at x and this is equal to cos at x into cos at e also so cos at e forms an identity we also need to prove that norm of the cos at e is 1 okay so let's see we have norm of cos at e it is uh, nothing but uh, cos at e is of the form e plus uh, say some element y where y belongs to i okay so i can write this as a uh, norm of e is less than equal to norm of cos at e is less than equal to norm e uh, by choosing y is equal to 0 i is an ideal so it's a subspace so 0 is an element of i so uh, i can uh, obtain that uh, e plus y instead of uh, y i am replacing it by 0 so this is i can say that norm of e is less than equal to norm of norm of cos at e is less than equal to norm of e and norm of e is 1 so i get norm of cos at e is less than equal to 1 now if i get the other inequality i can prove that it is equal to 1 now for that for any I'm making a statement or a claim that is for any u belongs to i okay norm of e plus u is greater than equal to 1 okay this is always true why uh, because um, the proof of this is as follows because if if suppose if suppose it is not true if suppose norm of e plus u is less than 1 then we have uh, by a proposition by proposition if the proposition is as follows if norm x is less than 1 then e minus x is invertible okay so here we have norm of e plus u is less than 1 uh, by this proposition we get e minus e plus u is less than 1 so this implies uh, sorry it's not less than 1 it is invertible so from this what do I get minus u is invertible okay or uh, I can say that u is also invertible hmm? but uh, we have done a remark that x is not invertible if and only if it does not belong to any proper ideal so if u is invertible you can say that u does not belong to any proper ideal this was the third remark which we had proved in the previous section so which is a contradiction because u was supposed to be an element of i so for any u belongs to i norm of e plus u is greater than equal to 1 okay so if norm of e plus u is greater than equal to 1 norm of e plus u is greater than equal to 1 for any u belongs to i right so this is the form of the cos set so this implies norm of cos at e is greater than equal to 1 hence combining the two inequalities we get norm of cos at e equal to 1 ok now there is just one more thing that we have to prove that is 
that norm of cos at x y is less than equal to norm of cos at x into norm of cos at y. This is the last thing that we have to prove to show that the space script A by I is a Banach algebra. So for Z1, Z2 element of the ideal, choose any epsilon greater than 0 such that norm x plus z1 is less than equal to norm of cos at x plus epsilon and norm of y plus z2 is less than equal to norm of cos at y plus epsilon okay this is just a assumption so norm of uh, x plus z1 is less than equal to norm of uh, cos at x plus epsilon and norm of y plus z2 is less than equal to norm of cos at y plus epsilon. So what will be norm of cos at xy? Okay. This will be say norm of xy plus some z uh, where this z belongs to y. Okay. So I can write this as norm of x y plus say z1 uh, plus z2 because z1 and z2 are again elements of i so this can be written as x plus z1 into y plus z2 hmm? so these and all are elements of the corset script a by i so this is less than or equal to norm x plus z1 into norm of y plus z2 which is further less than or equal to norm cos set x plus epsilon plus norm of cos set y plus epsilon right so as epsilon tends to zero what do we get epsilon tends to 0 norm of cos at x y will be less than equal to norm of cos at x into norm of cos at y so this also we have obtained so we have actually proved that if you are considering an algebra then the closed ideal uh, the quotient space formed with the help of the closed ideal is actually a Banach algebra. So we have proved all the properties of the Banach algebra. So uh, that is uh, the remark that we had to consider. So with this we shall wind up the lecture. So thank you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy.